Today we're going to create multiple dependent drop down lists in Google Sheets. So last week I showed you a simple approach to creating a dependent drop down list. This means that the choices you have in the second list is dependent on your first list. Now that works well if you have one dependent list. But what if you want to have dependent drop down lists on multiple rows? Is there a simple way you can set this up that doesn't require app script? Let's find out. Okay, so this is the sheet we're going to be creating our multiple dependent drop down lists on. What are they based on? Our master data is in a separate tab right here. We have three different divisions and then the list of the apps that belong to that division. The first drop down is going to have the division so the person can select that. And once they do in the second drop down, they should only see the list of apps that belong to that division. In last week's video, we just set up one dependent drawdown list. And I showed you different ways that you can set this up depending on how your master data is organized. This time I've picked this setup for the master data and I want to create my dependent drop-down list on a separate tab. So first off, let's do the easy part, which is the list for division. That's basically the headers that I have for my master data. Those are these. So I'm going to go to the place where I want to have my drop-down, go to data validation, data, data validation, select from a range. My range is sitting right here and it's productivity game or utility. Click on OK. Reject input if it's not from my list and click on OK. Now I have my first drop down right here. Now here's the thing with Google Sheets. If I copy this drop down, I'm just going to remove the value in it. If I copy this and I paste this until here, what happens is it shows me the same list, even though I didn't fix my selection. So remember when we did the range referencing under data, data validation here, I didn't fix these, but it's as if it has invisible dollar signs there. Now, if I go down here and go back to data, data validation, it's the same range. So in case you're used to Excel, this part behaves differently. It automatically fixes the range, which can be good but not if you want to make multiple dependent drop-down lists because it's going to make one part of this whole setup a little bit more manual. You're going to see what I'm talking about. So let's get started with creating the second drop-down. So I'll just select productivity here so we can see if everything works. Now, because you can't use formulas directly inside the data validation drop-down list, you have to do a data preparation on a separate side here. Now, in my solution, what I'm going to do is create a data preparation for 10 drop downs because I have 10 there. So I'm going to set up the 10 here. Now, that's a bit too much. So let's remove this. Now, for each of these drop downs, I have to prepare the data set. I'm going to use the index function to get this done. The first thing I need is the reference, which is the range of possible answers. I'm just going to go until 20 in this case. No need to include a lot more if you don't need them. I am going to fix this though, because you're going to see why in a second. I have to pull this down later. So let's go with a four to fix the entire reference. Then how many rows do I want to move down? Well, I want to include every single row. So every single app that belongs to the division. Last is the column and we're going to match the column. Let's go back to our dependent list here and select A3. I'm not going to fix this. The range where I want to look this up is here. This time I am going to fix, so F4. And finally, an exact match. So we need to go with a zero. Close and close and press enter. And I have the apps that belong to productivity. Remember, productivity was selected. Switch to game. I should see the apps that belong to game. Now I am planning to pull this down, but I don't want it to be vertical. I want it to be horizontal. So let's go ahead and transpose this. So just put it inside the transpose function. 
And that's our list of apps. Data validation takes horizontal or vertical. Now, if I did the fixing correctly, we should get our values here correctly. And I think that we do. It's just that I have nothing selected. So let's test productivity, go here and we see the apps that belong to productivity. Now this any doesn't really look nice. So let's put this inside the if any function. If the result is an error, basically this NA error, we want to see nothing close bracket presenter. And let's pull this down. Okay, so that looks good. If the data validation in Google Sheets didn't have these invisible dollar signs, all we would have to do is go back to data, data validation, and select our first range from the master. Now here, let's go all the way up to column Z. So we're staying on this same row because everything is horizontal. And we're just going to include some empty ones in the end. That doesn't hurt. Go with OK and reject input and save. The first one, all good, right? If we didn't have these invisible dollar signs, I could just copy and paste this down and it would move automatically my data validation to the next lines. But unfortunately, it doesn't. So this is the manual part that you have to copy this down. Now I'm going to highlight this, right mouse click, paste special, and let's just paste the data validation only. Now we have to go to each one, data, data validation, and update this to the next row. Right. So this is obviously something you can do if you don't have a lot of rows that need to be corrected. Right. So I'm going to go with six here. And then this one would be the next ones. So it has to go to seven and save, right? Seven, because that's this one right here. Okay, so each one has to have its own possible. If you have maybe 10, if you have 20, you know, you can be fast getting this done, but not if you want it to apply to the entire sheet here. For that, you will have to use a more complicated solution, probably with App Script. But in case you don't need a huge range, you can use this because each of these is going to be dependent on this one because each of them has their own data preparation table. So that's a simpler approach you can use to create multiple dependent dropdown lists in Google Sheets. If you like this video, as always, don't forget to give that thumbs up. And if you enjoy the content of this channel and you're not subscribed, consider subscribing before you leave. Thank you for watching.